And good morning and welcome everyone to this week's Shed Adventures. So we got flat cap on, we're obviously going outside, need to keep the head warm. Got the old half, half gloves on, which is very good. What are we gonna do? Well, we have been promising you for a few weeks that we'll go out and try and find ourselves a longbow stave. Try and explain what a stave is and uh, see amongst all the trees around the graveyard if we can go and find one. Just out of interest, I was just sat here and I was looking, I was looking at this, um, which was on the window ledge. What, what the hell is that, you might say? Well, if you remember a few, uh, a few episodes ago, I showed you a seal uh, that uh, that I uh, that we uh, oh, I shot in the Antarctic on an expedition, um, and this is part of its of its lower jawbone actually, that side of it. Um, just out of interest, if you've never seen a seal, that's his lovely canine tooth. Look at that monster. And um, yeah, all that dark stuff on the end. Well, I think is food and blood. Um, hmm. Anyway, that fits inside the sealed jaw there. Nothing to do with today's episode, but I just happened to be there. So I thought I'd um, I'd show you that. OK, so uh, I'll stop here. Let's get outside and try and find ourselves the makings of the Great British Longbow. OK, so here we are at our local village church. Square Tower, very beautiful. Norman Church. So obviously, before anyone asks, we look at this beautiful building. Look at that. So we've obviously asked permission to be here and to film and more importantly, to start looking at the trees and seeing if we can find something to make an English longbow. So if we step back and look up here, we can see a whole raft of yew trees. In fact, they're running right down, right down this side of the church and, and actually round the back, although they, they've been cut down fairly recently. And there's even some up there as well. And you might be able to hear the geese in the background. So what are we looking for up in these trees? Well, let's start off with what we're not looking for. You're not trying to find a piece of wood that looks like a longbow. That's not what you're after. You're after something, it needs to be about seven or eight feet long, and it needs to be about three, four or five inches in circumference. So, so it's you know quite a substantial branch, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna split that down um, into almost like a, like, like a Toblerone type shape, almost triangular type shapes. And out of it, we could get one, two, or if we're very lucky and the wood splits right, three chunks of wood, out, um, three potential longbows out of it. But it's just trying to find something. And the biggest problem is knots. So a knot is where a branch joins the, the bough of the tree and it makes this knot. And of course, that, when you try and split it or you try and work it, is a weak point. And in the past, you've seen that I've broken many long bows and I've been using them as axe handles and various other things. And that's quite simply because knots have been in the wrong place. Um, and it's caused me to break what I'm doing. Now, this is interesting. So. Here, we have the boundary of the church. That's the church boundary. So actually, the trees technically are on the church boundary, but they're in, they're in my neighbor's beautiful garden of his manor house. So I may, have asked the wrong person for permission to oh there's something interesting for permission regarding cutting the tree down and now I think I'm gonna have to ask someone else but let's have a look at this tree oh we can see some 
And this has been cut down by someone or had bits chopped off it recently, which is not me. But we're after something. Oh, there she is. Now, how can I point that out? Oh, yes. Can't see it. But up there, right in the middle of the screen, there is something six, seven feet tall. Only a few, and look at that there, it is there. Only a few wispy side stems coming off it. Fairly straight. And there's potentially another one there. Right, this tree, this tree looks like longbow, longbow heaven, to be honest. There's a few, that's a bit thin, but I can see a longbow in, in the internal of that, or well, worth a try. Okay, so <laughs> we'll stop there. I won't bore you any longer with my, my lusting after longbow staves. I will go and now ask permission of, uh, of the neighbours whether we can come back and cut a lump off this tree. I won't bore you with me sawing away. I'll next see you back at Shed HQ and we can start our work. So bye bye for now. Here we have our longbow stave. Um, it was about, <laughs> well, I am getting old. It was a bit more of an effort climbing up into the yew tree than I thought. It was slimy and bits of branch were cracking off. It was a bit of a rotten tree. But we've got ourselves a good, I don't know, seven or eight feet of stave. Now, we do have an issue. I told you the diameter of this needed to be four or five inches, and this is probably two and a half. So it's about half the diameter that we actually would want in a perfect world. The issue we have is we don't live in a perfect world, uh, and uh, we've got limitations in terms of number of trees I've got and what looks like um, wood that's useful. And if I can explain the issue, let me bring this in line here. So we can have a look at this lovely end. So here's that lovely end. Now, if you remember, I explained about this heartwood and this white, this white outer wood and how the heartwood likes to be compressed. So that's on the inside of your bow and how this white wood here likes to stretch. So that's always on the outside. That's always on the, move that out there a bit. That's always on the outside of the bow. So you'd want this about twice as big and we chop it in half and you'd have 50-50 white and dark. Now, my issue here is when I start stripping off the bark, I've got very, very little of the white to play with. So not ideal, but it's what we've got. It's long, it's straight doesn't seem to be too many knots in it so what we'll do we'll give it a go now I've got options and I've got to think these through carefully so the the proper way or the way you would have done this is to um, hit this with an axe uh, start it to split down the middle and use feathers which are like steel um, steel sort of stakes shape like wedges steel wedges called feathers and you'd start to get the split going down the middle and you'd bang in the feather, make them another split, move the next feather down and you could split it right down the middle. Two things, one, takes a bit of skill, a bit of practice, um, and two, I don't have any feathers. So what I do have is a few cold chisels. I have three or four axes, so I could start it off with one ax and then once I get a split, smack another axe in there and then use the old sledgehammer on the axe and try and split it. So that's an option um, and that's more genuine. I could, because I've got to be so careful about how much wood we use, I could just take the power plane to this because potentially if I cut this right down the middle, there's two longbows in here, which is rather lovely. Or I just power plane half the wood off and I end up with 
wasteful big pile of, um, of wood chips on the floor. So I'm not keen on that. But when you start splitting wood, the wood also goes where the wood wants to go, not necessarily where you want it to go. So I'm going to have to give that a bit of thought and uh, I'll show you what my, uh, what my solution is in, uh, in the next part of the video. All right. Bye bye, everyone. So, success. I last saw you about 40 minutes ago. What a palaver. Um, I had a bit of a go at splitting it, but it didn't look and feel right. So I have to jump forward to the 20th century, not the um, 13th or 14th. And uh, I ended up putting a, putting a power saw down the middle of this. So we now have two, two staves. We've, um, we've cut these, we cut this in half and um, there's some rot and there's a few knots in it. So really we've got the makings of, of two longbows here. This one is the lighter of the two because um, it's, it's not as thick and uh, there's still a good mix of dark and brown wood. So this will be the front of the bow um, and this will be the back of the bow. And this is a far heavier piece of wood. And to be honest, um, probably has more chance of absorbing shakes and bits and bobs than any rot that might, we might find in here. So, so what you would probably do with this now is each of these would go into the top of the shed, into the eaves of the shed for two or three years to dry out and really mature. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll look at these carefully and, and uh, examine them a bit and see what the wood feels like to me. One of them I'll put away for the long term because potentially there's two really nice bows here and we'll leave that for a couple of years. And then the other one, probably this lighter one, um, I'll start stripping the bark off really just to show you how we'll shape a bow out of here. It's not the right way of doing it. We'll be doing it with very wet wood, but um, I don't think any of us want to wait. Um, another couple of years so we've got good lengths these are seven or eight feet long um, there is a bit of a problem a bit of a problem here at the base of this one um, so we might just take that bit out but even so we've got some real potential in this um, so we'll see how we get on so I'll start taking the bark off and that's simply me and a knife I'll show you some of that won't bore you for too long um, and uh, after that, we'll start working out the depth and the width and how it's going to taper and, um, and really get involved in uh, a bit of design. All right, talk to you soon. Bye -bye. So we're now back inside the shed in the warm. I've got just, this is a, a naval uh, jackknife, hence it's got the marlin spike on there for undoing shackles, but it does hold, this is quite old, um, probably just after the... Um, Second World War, but it does hold a lovely blade. And all I'm going to do now is very gently strip off the bark. And you'll see, hopefully, if you can, no, I'll do it a bit higher, hopefully you can see it all starts to turn white. So this is the lovely outer skin. And a knot there. You've got to be careful of him. This all now very gentle there's nothing there's nothing I'm just sort of letting the weight of the knife just take this off because as I said before um, I haven't left too much white too much white out of wood here so I can't afford to take to take much off so I'm just taking the bark off now that's going to be a problem that's not in a good place that knot um, and it's oh, no we'll see well, anyway you just have to see you, you you can you can want all you want but you've got what you've got so we'll we'll work our way through this um, and by the time I've stripped it I'll start to know it a bit better as a as a piece of wood and I'll know the problem areas and we'll see if we can we can design our bow um, because it's longer than it needs to be so we've got a little bit of give, but that is right in the middle. So I won't bore you with 40 minutes of um, 
of taking the bark off. It's very wet. I'll leave you to, I'll, you leave me to it and I'll show you what we've got and uh, I'll show you the design I'll, I'll come up with later on. All right, bye-bye for now. So you can see I'm literally just caressing this because I desperately don't want to take too much of this lovely springy outer wood off. And this knife, I have to say, holds an amazingly good edge. So I've only sharpened it once. So we're nearly there. And we've got to make some, got to make some tough choices soon about exactly right so we've got on quite well but we've come to the the classic problem and it's it's this knot here this is really starting to drive the design of the bow because knots are not what you want particularly in the parts of the bow that bend so in a perfect world right down here can't really see but a good foot below this knot is where I'd want my my hand, where I'd want the halfway position to be. But this knot is in a critical part of where the bow is going to bend, and that will be a weak point. So what I'm thinking of doing is is changing the design of the bow. As as I've always said, it's the it's the wood that talks to you, or it's the it's the wood that that drives it. You you have to work with what you've got. I'm thinking of making that. The middle of the bow because the middle part of the bow bends nothing it doesn't really bend at all it shouldn't bend at all so this would be pretty much as it is i can't afford to take much more wood off there just just smooth it round a little bit um and that would give me three feet above three feet below and that would give me a six foot a six foot long bow and i'm five foot eight so i think that will have to be the compromise we'll keep working on it um but I'm, I've, you can see how it dips in there. Um, and that's, that's uh, I just can't take any more, any more off there. Um, so I think that is the bit I need to work around. So that's the bit that I'll put a nice piece of leather over that as a, as a hand grip. Um, and that will be the bit that has to, has to do the least work. And that will be the weakest part of the bow. So I think that's the, that's the plan. Um, this is very, this is very, you get sucked into this, so you can see it's starting to get dark. Um, I've been at this long enough. I don't want to start making mistakes because I'm getting tired. So I think we will call that a day. So that's day one. Um, this wood is soaking wet. Uh, it should be lovely and dry after a couple of years and season. But anyway, we will, we will soldier on. It's very difficult to cut with anything else but a knife. Well... If you stuck with it, um, well done, and thank you very much. That was a bit of a, a bit of a grueling episode. Um, so where are we? Well, I've had enough, I think, at the moment. So we'll call it a day. Um, yeah, everything's a compromise. My workshops are compromised. It's really not designed for long bows. I haven't necessarily got exactly the right tools. I'd like a draw knife. That lovely sort of half moon with two handles so you can pull it down i need to find one in a in a second hand shop we still have this problem here this knot is really causing me problems and i'm concerned that we're going to do hours and hours of work and then we're going to snap it just here at this weak point um but there we are that's the fun of um that's the fun of playing with these things um but then again you can't see it that's when you there's a, you know, there's a lot of power. There's a lot of power in a six foot English longbow. So if we can get this shaped, soaking wet, it should be here lovely and dried after a couple of years. Um, we'll persevere and we will get something that I think will shock you when you see, um, 
when you see the power this can this can impart into an arrow. Um, so thank you very much for um, for watching this episode. Uh, please like and subscribe. That's great for the channel. Um, I will continue working in the background, uh, and uh, next time you see us, hopefully we will have we will have um, sanded and uh, and planed and and whittled this down to uh, to something looking like a longbow. And uh, we may be able to get a get a string on it, even if it's not properly finished. Um, and just and just have a little play outside and let you see what we've managed to make. So hopefully that's in that's inspired you to go and have a go yourself. Um, it's a lot of fun. So thank you very much, and uh, have a lovely weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you very soon.